Hey guys, Chastity and Greg here with another breakdown of Star Trek Picard. This is episode three, the end is the beginning. Now of course, warning, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this episode yet, get out of here and then come on back. All right, so we start 14 years ago and we see a lot of the same shots that we saw last week from Mars with an added shot at the end where Mars is just on fire. Yeah, back on Earth at Starfleet, we see Picard who is now ex-admiral uh, talking to Rafi about what just went down and how he just lost his job. Mars is burning. Picard informs Rafi that he's resigning from Starfleet following the aftermath of the Synth Revolt on Mars. The Federation halted the Mars evacuation, and all synthetic life forms are banned from Starfleet and research. Now, for a little backstory, Rafi has been featured in the comic, the Picard Countdown comic, where she's the first officer to the USS Verite, which is the ship that Picard helmed after the Enterprise to take care of the Romulan relocation effort. I actually dig that she calls him JL. I don't know why. I think it's cute. I think because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking he's just like, please stop calling me that. Just stop it. Now, Riker would never do this. Never. No. Never. Way less formal. It kind of indicates that they were extremely close with each other. Yep. Starfleet claims it was a fatal code error in the operating system that caused the synths to go rogue. Rafi suspected that the Tal Shiar were behind the attack years ago. It turns out that Picard's resignation was his last ditch effort to keep the Mars evacuation plan going. Yeah. He never thought that Starfleet would actually just accept it and tell him to move on. I'm honestly surprised too. If Picard was like, I'm leaving, unless you do this, I would listen to whatever he said. The first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth, whether it's scientific truth or historical truth or personal truth. Back to the present day, Picard visits Rafi at Vasquez Rocks for help with a ship and crew in his mission to find Bruce Maddox. Rafi isn't doing too well. She lost damn near everything after the attack and felt she was deserted by Picard, who hasn't spoken to her in those 14 years. You can see that Rafi smokes and drinks to cope. There's yeah. even, she takes like flowers. She's got that fancy vape yeah. that she's yeah. using the flowers takes on. Takes flowers, <laughs> puts in that vape, mm -hmm. and then keeps going. My entire life for the past 14 years has been one long slide into humiliation and rage. On the artifact Borg ship, Hugh is back. He congratulates Soji for talking to the severed Borg drones in their native tongue. Jonathan Del Arco first played Hugh in the Star Trek TNG episode, I Borg, with the injured drone being nursed back to health by Geordi and the rest of the Enterprise. With Geordi's help, he would learn to be human, eventually rejecting the Borg's way of life. You are Borg. You will assist us. I will not. I will not assist you. I. He later helped rescue the Enterprise from Data's twin lore in the two-part TNG episode, Descent. We also learned that Hugh is the executive director of the Artifacts Reclamation Project. So Hugh's been gone for a very long time from Star Trek, but he's, yeah, he's still got it. Like, yes, I can see that it's him. I uh, think Jonathan Del Arco did a good job here. His mannerisms of taking that one small beat, it's like a what second where he's just going over everything in his head and mm -hmm. going, oh. Like this moment of epiphany. So in that exchange between Hugh and Soji, there's this whole thing where we figure out quickly that, you know, while Soji may be on a lower rank than Hugh, she wasn't a severed board member. And so she's being treated differently with the Romulans compared to how Hugh is. People either see us as property to be exploited or as a hazard to be warehoused. Our hosts, the Romulans, have a more expansive vision. They see us as both. Soji has been granted an interview with Ramda. Apparently Ramda is the expert on ancient Romulan myth. So let's talk about Ramda. She's an interesting character. She yes. said she recognized her from tomorrow. So does she make predictions? Can she see the, future? She see the future? Like what's going on? Uh, we don't know yet, uh, but we do know that something happened here with her and her crew of her Romulan ship that got assimilated by the Borg. Mm -hmm. Could have been a Trojan horse as we find out later on that something weird happened when they tried to assimilate her and her other Romulan crew members. And Soji just like spits out information that she doesn't realize she knows about Ramda and she knows that she was on that ship. Which is so weird because I wonder, is someone watching over her like a Westworld thing? Is it really Bruce Maddox really playing the long game here where he's just in her eyes, he can see everything she's doing and giving her questions to ask <laughs> Ramda? How do you know that? You were on board the Imperial Scout ship Shaynor with 25 other passengers. You encountered this cube. You were assimilated. But then something went wrong. Back at the Vasquez Rocks, Rafi believed there was a full-blown cover-up with a high-ranking official in Starfleet working with the Romulans. She wants no part of Picard's mission, but still finds a pilot for him, Rios. 
So she resists and resists, but she's totally into the research. She's like hooked in. She wants to know what the mystery is. Like, hey, are you looking for Bruce Maddox? She's like, Psh, no. Okay, here's the rest of the info. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Commodore O pays a little visit to Dr. Gerardi in Okinawa. Commodore O, <laughs> with the shades, just showing up, standing there like a Bond villain. I don't know what to make of her. I just hope we don't get the line from her. You just don't get it, do you, Picard? <laughs> we will. She's just gonna deliver all of these like Bond villain type of lines. From there, Picard meets Chris Reed Rios aboard his ship. We find out that Rios was the first officer on a ship that was erased from Starfleet records. I like Rios. I think he's a really interesting new character. Tritanium stuck like, in his... Yeah. yeah it's like, I'm the, a badass and nothing hurts me. He's got some tequila, just yeah. throwing it on there. He's got a mermaid tattoo. But he also reads philosophy books. You are Starfleet to the core. I can smell it on you. That's just my tragic sense of life. Meanwhile, the Romulans try to take out Picard at the Chateau. Laris, Jabon, and Dr. Gerardi stop them. Picard attempts to interrogate one of the assassins, and it goes about as well as one would think. This thing. Predictably, the green acid shows up again. Lara slaps him on the head, <laughs> and they don't put anything over his mouth, even though they don't know exactly what that thing yeah. is. It looks like it's some kind of suicide pill, because couldn't tell the first time around if there was someone biting on something. It looks like they're biting on their tooth, mm -hmm. and they're just spitting something out. This scene kind of surprised me, but I really liked it. This whole action sequence in the chateau, you don't expect it, but... Yeah. I was worried about Zabon. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was too, I thought they were gonna kill him. Of all the characters in that room, I thought, oh it's no. It's like, who's the most dispensable? He's gone. And I then they're gonna avenge him. <laughs> yes, as this is their moment to go off in the space for Zabon. But I still want to know where the hell is Lars and Zabon, because I didn't Where's see Where's number too. one? Don't worry, he's gonna show up at some point with Deanna Troy in a few episodes down the line. I'm talking about the dog. Then back to Ramda, we learn that Ramda was on board the very last ship ever assimilated by the artifact cube. But something went very wrong when the Borg tried to assimilate her. There we get these lines from Ramda to Soji, like, are, what twin are you? Which one are you? Good then, twin or bad twin? Yeah, are you the one that lives or dies? So it looks like we have some kind of prophecy. <laughs> some Romulan, or I guess in this case, the Zatvash. You are the destroyer! She's the end of all! She's the destroyer! Was Ramda's ship a Trojan horse for the Borg cube? Yeah, was it like the Zotvash's plan to get assimilated by the Borg and then get in from inside them like a parasite or something? Mm. Ramda attempts to kill Soji and then herself, but Soji saves the day with her quick android speed. Then Soji calls her mother, which just kind of looks like a floating like program of a head, and she's just Hello, like, yeah. you know, FaceTime. Like, is Dodge okay? She's like, oh yeah, Dodge is fine. Like she wants a puppy. It's like, what is happening? So this is not a mother. Like, what is mother? I'm guessing this has to do with Maddox. Either she's calling in mom, and it's just Maddox on the other line, or it's a program in her brain that all of a sudden, if something goes weird, and she's asking questions that you know shouldn't be answered at the moment, her program just shuts down. Then Narek and Soji have a chat. Soji isn't sure how she suddenly knew information about a Romulan ship that Ramda was on. But Narek's not even listening and he just changes the subject and he's just like, I love you, I'm falling I for love you. you. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> After that, Rizzo meets up with Narek on the Borg ship. And this time she's in her Romulan form. Rizzo then calls Dodge's death a miscalculation. Oh, miscalculation. So it seems like Rizzo was behind the attack on Dodge. Yeah, she confirms it yeah. uh, in front of Narek. Yeah, with her brother, which is that relationship with Rizzo and Narek. I'm just gonna say it feels a little bit it's like weird. just getting some Cersei Jamie vibes here. That's all. Back at the Chateau, Gerardi tells Picard she's going with him, and she credits herself as the Earth's leading expert on synthetic life. Rafi is also joining the team, but just to hitch a ride. She finds out that Bruce Maddox is on Free Cloud, which is where Rafi wants to go. Three episodes in now. Question, do you trust Girardi? I do not. Has she been compromised? What went on in that conversation between her and Commodore O? We don't know. And then there's also the dialogue between Rafi and Picard saying, you didn't let me even do a basic security check on her. And they just like, I'll just bite you in the like, butt. Bye. Okay, that's probably gonna come back and haunt them. And to segue into our Easter eggs, this episode closes out with a classic line from Jean-Luc Picard. Engage.
The opening of the episode gives us our first look at the mid-2380s style Starfleet uniform worn after Star Trek Nemesis. This 24th century uniform created by Picard costume designer Christine Clark looks to be heavily influenced by Bob Blackman's Starfleet uniform designs seen on television and in film throughout the 90s. This is the first new senior service wardrobe design of that era introduced since the late Dominion War years. Rafi name drops the Beta Antares shipyard when discussing options for continuing the Mars rescue mission. The Beta Antares shipyard were Federation shipyards located in the Antares sector. Fun fact, the experimental prototype USS Prometheus was built and launched from that shipyard. As quickly shown in episode 2, Rafi lives at Vasquez Rocks in Southern California. This episode would mark the 13th appearance of this location in Star Trek history. We first saw this location as the Shoreleaf planet in the original series episode, Shoreleaf. It looks like Rafi is living in a Valtese home trailer, though the label is hard to read. If so, this could be a reference to the Valtese, a humanoid species from the planet Vault Minor, seen in the TNG episode The Perfect Mate. Rios has a piece of titanium shrapnel in his shoulder. In Star Trek, titanium alloy is a widely used construction material. The 24th century Federation starships have titanium bulkheads. Also, Borg tactical drones possessed a titanium infrastructure, as did Borg cubes. Rios has a copy of The Tragic Sense of Life, a real book published in 1912, written by Spanish philosopher Miguel de Unamuno, regarded as Spain's most influential thinker. The Tragic Sense of Life is his major philosophical essay dealing with existentialism and faith. When Picard beams onto Rios' ship, he's met with the ship's very own EMH, the Emergency Medical Hologram. The holograms were developed in the early 2370s by Starfleet and the holo programmer Dr. Louis Zimmerman. Who was the template for the EMH? Me. Notable EMHs are, of course, everyone's favorite EMH, Mark I, played by Robert Picardo, and the Mark II on the USS Prometheus, played by Andy Dick on Star Trek Voyager. Refresh my memory. Which of us has the terrible bedside manner? You're not my patient. My first bit of good news. A few of Picard's major accomplishments get a shout out from Rios' EMH. Chief contact with the Q Continuum, Arbiter of Succession for the Klingon Empire, Savior of Earth from the Borg Invasion, Captain of the Enterprise's D&E, and he even worked with Spock, as seen in the two-part TNG episode Unification. In Rafi's search for Bruce Maddox, we can spot another Easter egg, a Gorn egg to be exact. The Gorn are a race of reptilian, alligator-like aliens that have appeared a few times throughout Trek. In the original series episode Arena, Prime Reality Kirk and the Federation made first contact with the aliens in 2267. When Picard is beamed aboard Rios' ship, the TNG theme plays in the background. Captain Rios? Okay, I felt pretty good about this episode. Let's get this man to space. Let's go. Yes, and now looking at these three episodes, these three episodes were at the premiere for Picard, and I now really, really, really wish... It was one episode. It was just, episode. yes, yeah. they just took all three or just released them the same day so we can all watch them there. One of the major questions is whether Bruce Maddox is even really alive. Is he out there? Is This has to do with Girardi. I don't know yet. Yeah, someone's pulling the strings with Soji. Be sure to hit subscribe and come back next week for episode four. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below, and we'll see you all back here next time. Bye.